Okay, uh, I keep noticing all the strange stuff behind me here, like that weird, what is it? A, what is that thing? A lizard or a lizard alligator. Lizard or alligator. Something. Believe me, it's not meaningful. I don't have bookcases behind me and stuff like that. <laughs> this just happens to be there, and this is the best lighting in here. Okay, so uh, keep in mind that this whole series has to do with uh, creating meaning through arcs of through arcs of time and space, creating meaning in one's life through understanding consciously arcs through times and space, with many ways of doing that. For example, doing the dishes. You know, so I do the dishes here and I do it here, here, here. So anything that you've done repetitively, uh, and that you can go back and identify when that was, and then what was it like the next time, and the next time, and the next time, and the next time, will help you understand yourself through time. And that's what we're trying to do here. So I'm like the example of that, but anybody could do this. And it's a fascinating, absolutely fascinating process. Even more fascinating if you're an astrologer, because then you can correlate it with that. But I didn't do that here with this. So this one is called Riding the Bus Through Time. And I'm talking about long bus rides, not not in town okay so the first time that I rode a bus by myself we're talking by myself when when I when I was nine years old I was allowed to go to Boise from Twin Falls which was at that point was like a two and a half three hour journey by myself after going the first time with uh, an older girl uh, as kind of a chaperone I, I asked my parents if I could go along. Now, believe me, in this time and age, you don't do that. You don't let your kids go alone on a bus to a, another city. But back then, you still could, and they did, which is kind of unusual back then even, but um, it was possible to do. And, and my parents had lots of kids, and, you know, what's one less, maybe? <laughs> I'm sure they didn't think that way. But uh, they, you know, they'd take me to the bus station and pick me up, but I had this extended day to myself for the first time in my life. And I did this because I was getting braces on my teeth. So I'd have to go to the orthodontist. And he wasn't in Twin Falls. He just was in Boise. So I'd go up there and I'd go to the orthodontist. And then I had that afternoon until the bus went back to Twin to wander around Boise. And I wandered around just by keeping the Owyhee Hotel sign, which is high, in sight. So I went all sorts of places and just enjoyed myself thoroughly, went out to lunch by myself. I was nine years old. So what I was learning was independence and exploration, which are two features in my life which have stood me very well over time. And that was the first early experience that I had of that, and that was what I learned. And I really looked forward to those bus rides every single month. Okay, then the next time, was like the opposite. This time, I was riding the bus to California from Twin Falls for my freshman year in college. So it was the first time out of state on a bus, uh, first time an extended stay away, and I was 17 years old. And I get in the bus, and there was only one seat open. And this was at night also, like after dark. That seat was at the very back of the bus, this long seat. You know, the, the bathroom is before that, and then there's this long seat afterwards. And I there were two men that I had to squeeze in between. And uh, that was um, my first experience of the dark side and of actually an instinct for self-defense that came up. Because one of these men, the man on my left side, kept kept edging you know, his hand up my, or not up my leg, but towards my leg and then on top of my leg and then started up my leg. It was like really weird. And of course the bus was going around uh, windy roads so it would go, we'd sway back and forth so it would be easy for him to do that. And finally it became so glaringly obvious to me that he was doing something that wasn't what he should have been doing that I quickly rose and went up to the bus driver and told him, and he kicked the man off the bus. So I was able to exercise self-defense as well as experiencing this 
you know, really creepy experience of having somebody gradually try to horn in on me sexually. Okay, then the next time I rode the bus was Christmas time, going back home. And I got the entire bus singing Christmas carols, and that was a very fun journey. Another time, I remember on the bus, and I did that several times. I must have done it two more times because I went back to spring break also. So going back from, from uh, I think the final, the final time, because I was only at this college one year, uh, I read, I think it was The Idiot, one of Dostoevsky's books, all night long. So this was like, I had the experience of existential solitude and aloneness and the depths during that experience. I'd never had that kind of feeling before until I read Dostoevsky at night rolling on the bus. Next experience. So I had exploration and independence and then existential, then, then the dark side and self-defense, and then existential solitude and the depths. The next one was to New York City the next fall when I was transferring to Catholic University because Catholic University was closer to Yale University where my boyfriend was, my high school boyfriend, and so he was only going to be four hours away if I went to Catholic University, and so we could see each other once a month. And so that bus ride from Twin Falls to New York City with Dick was totally delicious because there was this sensual pleasure of sitting next to him all night long, all day long for three whole days. It was just exquisite. Now keep in mind we were still um, virtuous. We were still... What's it called? Uh, virgins at this point. But we did love to be touching each other on just, you know, his arm around me or just at least our sides touching each other as we slept or whatever it was. It was just an extreme sensual pleasure that I totally enjoyed that bus ride. Then the dark side again. And this was from DC, where I was at Catholic U, up to Yale, where I'd go. He'd either come down or I'd go up. And uh, every time I went up to see him, I would be castigating myself. Do not French kiss him. Do not French kiss him, because that was a mortal sin. I was a good Catholic girl. Do not, do not, do not. Like, just please don't do it. Just don't do it. And, you know, I was going up for a whole weekend. It was hard not to at least do that. And, of course, I always failed. I always did do that. And then all the way home on the bus, all the way back to Washington on the bus, four hours back, I'd be castigating myself for having done it and for then having to go to confession because of that. A confession to confess a sin that I, a sin that I knew I would commit, it again, commit again, but I had to pretend I wouldn't or be determined that I wouldn't even though I knew that I would because my sensual life, my, the life of my body was so strong, of course, at that age. And so that what I would call the toxic effects of strong conditioning I was experiencing uh, during those bus rides, both to and from. And then the finale. And this is an interesting one. The finale, which was two whole months on a bus. Okay, they offered this special deal. $250 on a bus <laughs> and I did that and the reason I did that was because I had just been fired from New College. I think I've told that story. Have I told that story of being fired yet? Maybe not. Okay, yeah. I've told it. Okay, so and I didn't know what to do next. I was completely at a loss. I was totally like what the heck do I do now? It was like, you know, my life was over and yet there was this opportunity that I could just sit there and watch the world go by, which is what I did. You know, back and forth, east to west, up and down, south to north. You know, getting out to have a horrible meal <laughs> every couple of hours. Um, you know, unsavory characters and savory characters, making sure I didn't have the other seat 
occupied if I could, making sure I was near the bus driver, but not just directly behind him because the, then the lights would get in your way at night. So I, I kind of had it all psyched out, which, which place on the bus was the one I wanted and how to put all my stuff on the other seat so nobody would sit on it and so forth. But the main thing was that I had two months out, two months that was completely separated from the old life. The new life hadn't started yet. The old life was done. And I was sitting there staring into the outside world. I was gone. I was watching the world go by an extended time out. When I was actually, I was only 31 years old, so I really didn't know how to process my experiences yet. But I was doing that unconsciously, I realize now. All that time, those two months, day and night, day and night, just watching the world go by. And that's the last time I ever rode a bus long distance. But when I look back on it for those 30 years, starting when I was nine years old, many interesting experiences teaching me many parts of, teaching me about many parts of myself and helping me learn them. And so I, I just um, exhort you to do the same thing with different routines or different experiences that you've had of the same kind at different times of your life and watching the arcs of meaning take place as you look at them all one by one. Thanks.